her? Or yes. Is it just a matter of the funding? technology is. I mean, I can make it up at Radio Shack. It's the computer program that runs it uh, that is impossible. I mean, uh, without your uh, without a good program, I said, "Why well, Bill Gates is uh, worth 150 billion dollars? He, he's worth the gross national product of most countries in the Pacific Rim, uh, and that's no joke. That's fact." Um, he did it because he knows how to make this computer work. Uh, the equipment to do it re requires really a harmonic generator and a delivery system. And uh, using electrodes, it's really simple to make. I mean, but <laughs> when I hear people that are experimenting with it, it's, it's more or less like throwing a pin in the dark and expecting to hit a, a million dollar bill or something. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It requires a highly sophisticated program that program is all we need to get access to. Um, that program is emerging through natural attrition in many medical research projects that are not going to be suppressed. So poor Kelly has had to sit around and wait on the antidote that has been around, I know, since 1969, for sure. Absolute, for sure, positive, because the antidote uh, those astronauts are not robots. Uh, we had one in our, in our country, John Glenn, the most famous of all, that uh, was in Congress. And I didn't see any robotic behavior with him. Um, I'm certainly not a John Glenn advocate by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I got you. Um, at any rate, the, the, the point remains the same. They got an antidote for whatever they can put out. And, and in Kelly's case, they had the antidote, and that's why I have stuck in there for 13 years and taken all this grief from everybody, because I knew they had the antidote. And I told them, give me my money back in the beginning, I fix Kelly, and fix Kathy. Don't put me through this. Okay, then after I had to fix Kathy, they provided the antidote for Kathy now, I will admit. They gave it to me by telephone. Um, that's in the book. Not in detail, but it's in the book. Uh, it will be in detail in motion picture, uh, which will be, we hope and pray, available for anybody to see in more than one language soon. Um, we're looking towards a number of documentaries. And uh, Discovery Channel and a few other of the major channels around have put out a tremendous amount of mind control stuff. We had a, a, a candidate recently who was a prisoner of war in, in Vietnam, uh, John McCain, whose father was an admiral. His father before him was, um, I, I believe, an admiral as well. John Glenn was a prisoner of war. And when they found out who he was, he went through a brainwashing process, as they call it. And uh, he was literally tortured out of his mind. And he got on national television now. I'm so proud of this guy. He got on national television and explained exactly how brainwashing works, exactly how mind control works, and exactly how his recovery worked, and exactly how the guys inside those prisons in Hanoi were able to cope with it. And I'm going, oh my God, here's a candidate for the United States. And then the guy rolls over and, and supports Bush. And everybody goes, what in the world's wrong with him? And they boo him out of the audiences and everything else. Um, it's, it was, it's really pitiful. Uh, but I don't know John McCain. I don't know how re recovered he is. All I know is that that sparkle in, in his eye and his voice was gone when he stood up there and delivered supposedly the greatest speech, the most patriotic speech in support of W. Bush, <laughs> as they call him, W. Uh, it's a heartbreaker. Uh, whether or not we have any impact on the Cheney Bush ticket, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, wh what's to replace them with? I mean, good grief. Uh, there's plenty of great choices that have done their best to, to, to become uh, vocal candidates and, and get out there. I, there was a little billionaire from Texas. I'm not supporting him any, by any stretch of imagination, but this guy's a billionaire. And <laughs> even he couldn't uh, get airtime by the medias, but he did win a major lawsuit against the medias, and they, and they have to give every candidate uh, equally, or sell them 
equal time if, if in fact they can afford to pay for it. My favorite campaign button is humanity for president. When the people lead, the leaders follow. It's inexcusable to allow that handful of criminals to control our technology when, and, and our information when so many people are in need of the release of it. And it's time good people realize that they are the majority. As we make a positive difference within our own walk of life, within our own communities, as is happening globally and beginning to happen globally, then it's, um, it's just a matter of time until the government realizes nobody is listening to them anymore. At the, at the conclusion of this uh, question and answer period, uh, I'm going to tell you all, I'm going to give you a scoop. So stick around. Next question. It's going to make you happy, I promise. It'll give you, I'll give you a peep to the, to the window in time. Yes. Um, how, how can I recognize a mind-controlled, ultra-mind-controlled victim? Well, or, uh, or, and, and are there levels of, um, of mind control? Oh, yes. How to recognize one uh, is extremely difficult. And it's virtually impossible now um, uh, if they're subjected to modern technology. Uh, you'd have to do some testing and get one-on-one -on -one with them to find out. Uh, in the old days, when these people had been uh, just conditioned uh, mind control, I'm talking about mind control now, uh, hardcore robotic mind control where somebody is suffering from a dissociative identity disorder, not dissociative disorder now. Big difference. One is sniffles and one is AIDS <laughs> in comparison. Um, was, was difficult. The first time I saw Kathy, I thought she was a bimbo, just a, a village idiot type, for one thing, for hanging around with the likes of Alex Houston. Um, I mean, ugh. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. Not after dinner. That was a great dinner. But to, to, to give you some um, tips on how it used to be, you used to be able to see the perpetual smile, the waxing face, the, the youth uh, that never seems to go away. Um, they have no idea how old they are. They'll tell you diff two different ages. They rarely blink. They, their blink response is terrible. They've got uh, a great big pupillary dilation, uh, all suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of the ritualistic traumas. I mean, when I'm saying ritualistic and not necessarily alcohol ritualistic, but uh, it usually was. Um, and the levels of mind control go from what our children are exposed to with having their history books altered and their learning uh, tools uh, that are being used against them to increase their ability to, uh, uh, to learn, but uh, reduces their ability to uh, uh, Critically analyzed. Critically analyzed. So from that, moving up the scale, you go to uh, media hype, and you go to media spin, as they call it, where our information, I mean, it's in there somewhere. You, uh, I can read the New York Times now um, and, and actually read the real news. It's in there. But you've got to know something about neurolinguistics. Okay, I, I urge each of you in this room Absolutely. to please, please. Uh, Canada and the United States are the last countries on, the, on this planet that I know of. What? You got plum mean. Uh, <laughs> to to uh, really get into the neurolinguistics. Neurolinguistics simply is the language of the unconscious, language of the subconscious. It was how I was able to make a fabulous amount of money drawing ads, print ads up, that you did not have to read. All you had to do was just flip the page. I got you. Um, what you need to do, because the mind's eye is a lot quicker than the, uh, on a subconscious level than your conscious is, what you need to do is look into neurolinguistics. That will give you protection from, uh, from manipulation, okay? From advertising, from uh, certain, uh, t whoa. So for certain television uh, broadcasts, uh, it'll give you discernment uh, with, uh, he's harmless. <laughs> uh, 
um, it, it'll help you in that regard. Now, moving up the scale from there, you get into what is known as people who have been uh, tra highly traumatized, not necessarily ritualistically or, or systematically before age five, before their brain is formed. Uh, that usually creates dissociative identity disorder, so that's the top of the scale. Uh, well, what I'm talking about are like four out of five girls in North America are, are sexually abused before um, they are of legal age. This is a terrifying statistic. I, you know, I would have thought one in a hundred. Uh, I was really naive. I didn't know. And three out of five boys, uh, as of 1999, uh, according to statistics, three out of five boys before, the, before, before puberty are abused, sexually abused by an adult. If they suffer from a dissociative identity disorder, they're highly suggestible and can be easily led by, by anyone that, um, that comes along and they can sway in the wind real easily. They, they don't have the conviction. They don't have the ability to stay rooted in what they believe in. Um, they may focus on it for a moment and something passes in front of them and they'll just go with that. And they're, they're so easily led and highly suggestible that, you know, do we call that mind control? Right now, France is passing laws against mind control mm -hmm. and having to define it because of the vast sliding scale of it? it is extremely difficult. Yeah, France is the first country in the world to, le uh, to form legislation to pass laws against mind control. Okay, I'm so happy I'm about to burst, <laughs> except for one little bitty problem. <laughs> they're being attacked by the churches, number one. They're being attacked by the ad agencies, number two. Those are the two biggest lobbies against it. I can understand why, because um, what you're trying to do is, is say, okay, you can't communicate anymore. If a person loses their free thought and their free will and, and their sole expression, that is an absolute extreme that has got to be recognized and stopped. A person who's been sexually abused and suffered from a suffers from a dissociative identity disorder has already gone over the line. It's too, it's incomprehensible abuse. And once it's incomprehensible and there's no place for it, it's like, it's as though the, the, the spirit is removed from it. The conscious mind is removed from it. And what happens after that, not that it's irrelevant, but what happens after that is after the fact, it's already over the line, the damage is already done, the dissociation and the compartmentalization is already in place. That person is always going to be easily led. They're going to be much more apt to pick up a magazine with, the, um, with, with sub subliminal uh, messages in it and respond to it and go out and buy everything that, that they, every ad that they see on TV, they'll go buy the products rather than actually make a decision about it. Um, so we, we need to recognize that they have that problem. In addition to that then, as they learn about mind control, they're apt to adapt that to themselves. When Mark and I spoke out with mental health professionals for the first five years, we encouraged them not to have group therapy. Oh my God. If they, by having group therapy with all of these affected people telling each other, they all pick up on each other's abuse and, and adapt it as their own. They need to write it out and do it on their own in order to actually recover because it's truth that makes them free. And you can't, and, and the therapists were, were doing it from a, um, from a position of stating that uh, it was, um, um, it was getting into their persona, it was, it was fragmenting their persona, so what their idea was is to keep it in the emotional because they seem to be all coming from the emotional side. Well, what they were doing literally was, was what I call collapsing the anchors even deeper to where the person could never be easily recovered. And the people that were going through therapy in the early days, I mean, there's a lot of doctors who wind up with scissors in their shoulders and pencils in their hand and, and they're getting lawsuits slapped on them and doctors being accused of rape and everything else. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I'm saying that the vast majority of them didn't happen. Um, these patients were extraordinarily delusional uh, because the doctors were making the great pitfall of saying, uh, this is a psychologist's favorite thing to say is, how does that make you feel? Oh my God, wrong, wrong, wrong. 
A best therapist <laughs> teaches a person how to think, not, not what to think. Right. And by asking leading questions like, oh, was that daddy did that to you? Is the pro oh, yes, that was daddy, because they're highly suggestible. So we've got daddy to realize their suggestibility level is, um, is in place. And instead, the question should be, who was that that did that to you? So there's a way of, of even formulating questions that are, are less leading. I never even ask any questions, uh, and I don't even believe in that aspect of it. But when I, names would be True. put on a piece of paper, I would say, who is this person? Even though, even though if I knew the name, I mean, it could have been Ronald Reagan. But I said, who is this? You know, because it, uh, it may be a screen memory or it may be something that is not accurate or something that was implanted. And they'd say, well, he's so-and-so. You know, I'd say, oh. As much as we but encourage. I, 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 that, that, I'm sorry. I, that was the only, only level of deprogramming that I actually ask any questions about. And it was just a confirmation. Frankly, when I was exposed to what Kathy told, I went into what was known as post-traumatic stress disorder, shock, okay? It was horrible I, because I had never seen or even imagined that this could happen in my country or in this country. Um, I knew about what you and Cameron did, but what you and Cameron did in Montreal, my God, was absolutely horrible, but uh, and I knew the details that had been brought out in Congress, but oh my God, it was nothing in comparison to the stuff that was coming out of Hurl. I thought, well, this is Fantasy City, and so I turned it over to some people in the intelligence community and within the military and within the Park Service and uh, the Park Service control all the the monuments in, in Washington. I turned it over to all these different people. Um, and they kept coming back to me, especially U.S. Customs, and I'm really giving up a lot of stuff right now. Uh, U.S. Customs came back to me with hardcore validation. I'm going, good Lord, uh, we're just, we're, it's over. It's ruined. We're all, we're all doomed, you know, and that was my attitude. And so I realized I knew enough about PTSD, I knew enough about shock to know what I needed to do to take care of Mark. Because, I mean, I'm supposed to be taking care of her, and I'm going into PTSD over what I'm hearing? My God, um, it, was, it was absolutely horrific, uh, the, the process. I got over it really quick, dealt with it, and, and on a professional level, because I knew what to do for myself. Uh, next question. Mosquitoes are awful, sorry. I'm enjoying everything you're saying. Um, it seems to me that all of society is under some form of mind control. Sure. Whether it's just media or different levels, right? And, and I really am seeing your story as a large teaching for all of us to break free. But one thing concerns me is that when the, your story finally gets out to more and more people, aren't we going to notice that there are more people coming out that are under this type of control as sex slaves or whatever, just no, they being won't. used. Uh, here's, here's the catch in the book. Uh, <laughs> you know how a map maker puts, puts um, fake, a fake town on, in his map to protect the integrity of his, of his work? So if somebody copies his map, he can sue them and recover these losses because of all that expense that he went to to produce that map. There are fingerprints in that book. If someone says they escaped from mind control, it's, it's total baloney. They escaped from abuse, okay? It's impossible to escape from mind control because you have to think. You don't think under mind controls. There's no, there's no sliding scale of that of robotic mind control. There's no such thing. It's, so you're saying there's a definite threshold where... Yeah, yeah, and that's what Kathy said earlier. Once you pass over that threshold, you don't escape, period. End of statement. And by law, you cannot take someone out of, of that, uh, um, in that condition. I mean, and kidnap them is right. what you literally have to do. And that was my question is, uh, you know, once we start noticing and we, come, we become more aware that there are people that are being controlled around us and maybe someone we care about, what kind of steps do we take? Wow. Um, that is it seems the, to me like we're going to need some sort of large program where 
We, you've got one in Edmonton, Alberta. <laughs> Besides, I mean, we've got a lot of nice, good healers and a lot of different techniques, but how do you help someone that doesn't want to help themselves? Well, unfortunately, question. they don't want to help themselves, and unfortunately, victims of, um, uh, let's just say, incest. Let's say they, they suffer from dissociative identity disorder as a result of incest, and um, they are highly functional. Some people are highly functional, go through their whole life, and never have any problem, believe it or not. And others start breaking down at different points. There are five points in a person's lifespan where they start, they start breaking down and looking very much like the Mel Gibson character in, in Conspiracy Theory. Um, there's also another movie out that I was introduced to called Time Bomb. It was made in 1993. It's probably the most accurate I have ever seen on mind control that's been, you know, theori uh, you know uh, for the theater uh, that I would highly recommend, Time Bomb. Um, it was, but I do know it was made in 1993. I never heard of it um, until I was, it was handed to me by a lawyer. He said, watch this. It's I, a little over-dramatized, but it's hard to depict what's happening in someone's brain. It's absolutely on target. Um, as yeah. far as, as the, uh, there, there is a huge, 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 huge problem you cannot violate someone's civil rights by incarcerating them, basically. Uh, in other words, to protect them from themselves because they have these personas that will report back. Basically, at this point, we've got to get some laws changed in, in this country and our country. Uh, the first thing we got to do is get this National Security Act abolished in my country because every country like Canada, uh, who's fallen prey to people like Ewan Cameron, who was the founder of the, uh, the American Psychiatric Association, who did all those diabolical things in, in the uh, Institute in Montreal during the 50s and 60s. Uh, I mean, the CIA skated on this thing. Um, there was tens of millions of dollars spent in, in uh, lawsuit or legal fees and, and getting this case before the public. And the CIA never had to admit a darn thing. They never had to pay anything off but 50 grand or something. It was, it was ridiculous. <coughs> Pardon me. But the bottom line was that they, they did it legally. Legally. Because you guys got blindsided because the United States and every ally of the United States, and there's only, what, seven countries, I think, left in the world that aren't allies, uh, have signed this treaty. <laughs> the bottom line is, our National Security Act applies to Canadians. That's horrible. But guess what? If you watch The Sleep Room, which was a fine production, uh, and for the CBC, it did it two parts, I don't know, three years ago. Um, how many people in this room heard of The Sleep Room? Oh my wow. God, that's scary. Whoa. Go to your library and get it. It's, it's a video. You can order it from the Discovery Channel. Very important. Or you work. can just, frankly, go to any library or any video store. It's called The Sleep Room, for Pete's sakes. It is, a, it is dramatized, 100% accurate, detailed um, about what it takes to, to, to go up against the big guys on, on uh, mind control issues and what happened to the Canadians and why that Canadian minister's wife um, who went in for simple depression and came out a vegetable uh, and he's the one that, that really launched the whole thing because he had political clout. Um, but the bottom line was the CIA skated on it. And um, then they slapped the National Security Act Kathy and I are, are one of only two people, individuals, that have been fortunate enough to have them do it in open court. Uh, in the sleep room, they did it in chambers, well, like they've always done it on all the cases. But we're just absolutely the luckiest people on, the, on this planet that we had a, a prima donna judge that invoked the National Security Act in open court. Oh, my God. It's, the, uh, it's what kept us alive. Just one, one little bit different perspective on the answer of helping people that, that don't necessarily want to look at what happened to them. There are um, people who have grown up from a sexually abused environment 
begin to have repressed memories surfacing, usually around the age of 30 or shortly thereafter, and they don't really want to deal with the issues. The person continues to maintain their life in a manner that leaves the, where they're highly suggestible, little disjointed, enormous mood swings, severe depression, and going to a psychiatrist or a psychologist that they may have done in the past, may not have helped properly or whatever. Bottom line is those people could take one simple word of advice that could help them enormously. If they're afraid to look at their memories, it's because they verbalized them in the past. Don't and ever verbal let them verbalize them. Verbalizing them keeps it in the emotional. If the compartmentalization of memory occurs because of a trauma too horrible to comprehend, that trauma must be made comprehensible. The only way to do that is to write out memory. By writing out memory, the very act of moving a pen takes the logic portion of the brain. So the memory of the event that's so horribly emotionally incomprehensible is transferred over to the logical, written out in detail on paper in a way where it's shifted, it's shifted over and it's gone into a completely logical way. Logic makes the incomprehensible comprehensible. Then after the e event is remembered in full detail, then dealing with the emotional issues about what happened is usually um, less, less overwhelming and less, less relevant and rarely even requires a psychologist or a psychologist. If there's a loving person in the, the family or, or any of you are concerned of, of a loved one in that manner, love is all the support that they would need to be able to um, get through the reality of dealing with the issue. But writing out the memory is the key. Even if they don't want to look at it, that makes it easy to deal with. Next one. Thank you. Okay. Boy, these are great questions, you all. Big bugs, but great questions. There's <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can't haven't, find. Uh, I haven't read the book yet, but uh -oh. I was um, wondering that uh, Kathy yesterday was saying something about uh, the abuse happening at a very young age and then uh, the father um, being kind of an ally with the government or something.